Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing heart failure. So we've now finished our discussion of the causes of heart failure and what I would like to finish with is a discussion of one, the progression of heart failure and two, I'd like to solidify our discussion of the impact of heart failure on the kidneys, the lungs and the liver. Before we do those two things, however, I would just like to actually add on a bit of information uh, under the section about cardiomyopathy. So if you remember, we went through seven different causes of cardiomyopathy, or we listed seven different causes of cardiomyopathy. I would now like to add on an eighth one to that. And I realized that we're going to need this uh, when I actually thought about what I wanted to say for the progression of heart failure and indeed how uh, heart failure can end. So the eighth and very, very important cause of cardiomyopathy, and it's a dilated cardiomyopathy, so it's a loss of muscle and atrophy of the cardiac muscle, is cachexia. And in the same sort of spirit, uh, I will put anorexia there as well. So let's just have a brief discussion of this. So firstly, what do these two words mean? So let's start with cachexia. They mean, by the way, different things, or at least I'm using them to mean different things. So cachexia is the way in which a huge number of diseases end, terminal diseases. So, for example, cancers can end with cachexia. Um, AIDS can end with cachexia. Many horrific lung diseases can end with cachexia. COPD can end with cachexia. Interstitial lung disease can end with cachexia. Neurological diseases can end with cachexia, so Parkinson's disease can end with cachexia. Dementia can even end with cachexia. So let me explain what this means. By the way, these diseases don't necessarily have to end in this way. So for instance, COPD and interstitial lung disease, they might kill you through respiratory failure, or alternatively, they might kill you through cachexia. So what does cachexia mean? Cachexia means wasting away. You lose all your muscle bulk in cachexia. You might lose the um, the desire to eat and drink, you might go into a drowsy state as it progresses and that certainly will stop you eating and drinking and you just gradually waste away. So famously this is the way that cancers end. Cancers are incredibly metabolically active, they use up a huge amount of nutrients so they gradually can cause people to waste away and eventually people can just end up in a sort of drowsy state from the wasting because the brain doesn't have enough nutrients left to continue working properly and then when they're in a drowsy state they're not going to eat and drink so everything's going to get worse and worse. Um, AIDS can end in that same sort of way. The uh, again, AIDS can end in a huge number of different ways. AIDS obviously is the result of HIV infection and it's a horrific immunosuppression. So AIDS might kill you through some horrific infection that you get because of the immunosuppression. So if you get tuberculosis, for instance, because of the immunosuppression, that might kill you through respiratory failure or through sepsis. Um, but another way that AIDS can kill people is through gradual wasting away. They lose all their muscle because of the um, metabolic activity needed to sustain the virus within their body. Um, and they will eventually go into a drowsy state and then stop eating and drinking and waste away even more. So AIDS can end with cachexia. These respiratory disorders, COPD and interstitial lung disease, again, these might kill people through respiratory failure. Respiratory failure is often a very quick way to die um, because hypoxia kills people incredibly quickly um, but alternatively these lung diseases can end again with a cachexic state uh, people gradually just lose the uh, desire to eat and drink and the reason for that would be that if you have chronic respiratory failure um, from these conditions. So chronically low oxygen levels and chronically low, uh, sorry, chronically high carbon dioxide levels in the blood, they might not be bad enough to kill you directly through the derangements in the gases. However, those chronically abnormal gas levels in the blood are going to lead to bad functioning of the brain because the, ox the brain needs oxygen to work and it doesn't like having too much carbon dioxide. Um, so if you have chronic type 2 respiratory failure, that can lead to an abnormal functioning of the brain and you can gradually go into a more and more drowsy state from that, stop eating and drinking, and then you will waste away from that condition. Um, so again, these can end with cachexia. 
Parkinson's disease, again, is a neurological condition, a horrific degenerative neurological condition. Again, that can put people into a eventually drowsy states where they stop eating and drinking and then they become cachexic. And the same with dementia. Dementia is a neurodegenerative condition and it can end with a cachexic state. So that's what I mean by cachexia. It's the way in which a huge number of diseases end with the gradual wasting away of the body and all the muscle wastes away. Um, anorexia, what I mean by that is deliberately not eating and drinking. I mean anorexia nervosa, which is a eating disorder uh, commonly seen in teenagers, particularly teenage girls, where they become obsessed with losing weight. They become obsessed with uh, the idea of losing weight and how it's going to make them so much more beautiful. Uh, so, and it becomes kind of an addiction to lose weight. And they can become incredibly thin and they can lose all their muscle tissue. Of course, you lose your fat tissue first and then when all that's gone, you start losing your muscle tissue. So again, this can trigger a complete wasting away, a complete atrophy of skeletal muscle. So why have I brought these two things up here? Well, because not only does the skeletal muscle waste away, if these become bad enough, the heart muscle will waste away. Of course, the heart muscle gets spared till last. So you lose all your skeletal muscle first, uh, and then once you haven't got any more of that to lose, then you will start losing your heart muscle. So the heart muscle will uh, atrophy, uh, and you can get dilated cardiomyopathy from these conditions. So I bring this up because loads of end-stage conditions can end with cachexia, and therefore loads of end-stage conditions can end with people going into dilated cardiomyopathy and heart failure. Another little bit of information that has just dawned on me that I haven't actually told you at any other part of the video and which I would like to add in now, and I'll do this in a different colour, is that um, I told you long, long ago, I think in the first part of the video, about how we can talk about left heart failure and right heart failure. And if you remember, I said that right heart failure is just heart failure where the cause is on the right, and left heart failure is heart failure where the cause is mainly on the left. However, in this sort of condition, and indeed in other examples of what we've been discussing for causes of heart failure, the actual cause isn't solely on the left or the right. In that case, you could just call it heart failure, or if you wanted, you could call it bilateral heart failure. So we could call it BHF for bilateral heart failure, meaning that, you know, the cause isn't isolated to either side, it's affecting both sides of the heart equally. So in the case of cachexia and anorexia, it's going to be all of the heart chambers that are going to atrophy away in this case. So you're going to get both uh, failure of the left ventricle and failure of the right ventricle. So it's, you can't call this left heart failure or right heart failure, it's bilateral heart failure. This isn't a term we use that often, instead we just call it heart failure. And indeed many of the um, Many of the causes that we've been through previously, such as arrhythmias or genetic cardiomyopathies, um, what other examples can we give? Uh, infective cardiomyopathies, these examples would cause bilateral heart failure. They'd affect all the chambers equally, potentially. Maybe not infection. If infection was localised to a certain part of the heart, then maybe it would just cause either left heart failure or right heart failure. But if it was affecting the entire heart, then of course it wouldn't be right to call it left heart failure or right heart failure. Uh, really, it would be bilateral heart failure. So I just wanted to add that on as well. Right, so let's now go back to our um, what I wanted to start the discussion of in this video, which is how does heart failure progress and the sort of natural history of heart failure and how heart failure can kill you. So the progression of heart failure. And indeed, heart failure can end with cachexia as well. And I want to now explain how. So let's do this with a specific example. Let's say someone has aortic stenosis. So an elderly gentleman, let's say an 80-year-old man, so we'll tell a story because I always think things are better with an actual concrete story. So we've got an 80-year-old gentleman um, and he's had a good life. But unfortunately, he is now developing aortic stenosis. So he's got a very calcified aortic valve here. Uh, he's not, let's say, suitable for surgery. Uh, with, or indeed, let's say he's 200 years ago where surgery isn't an option. So we're just going to follow the natural history of the disease. So he's got a calcified aortic valve. And now, of course, the blood 
is finding it difficult to get from the left ventricle into the systemic arterial system because he's got aortic stenosis from that calcification. That is going to progress over time, that aortic stenosis. Uh, so it's going to get worse and worse, and his heart failure is therefore going to get worse and worse. In addition, if it's not treated, gradually, as we've discussed, you're going to get cardiomyopathy of the left ventricle here. Uh, potentially a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy of this left ventricle because it's going to adapt to the difficulty that it's having with pumping blood through this stenotic aortic valve. Now that cardiomyopathy will worsen the heart failure um, and therefore we're going to get heart failure progressing for two reasons, not only the aortic stenosis progressing but also the hyper hypertrophic cardiomyopathy of the left ventricle is going to progress. As it progresses cardiac output is going to go lower and lower and lower and that means that blood supply to all the tissues of the body is going to get lower and lower and lower and what this gradually results in is it can initially cause progressive cyanosis so what does this mean this means a bluish tinge to the tissues of the body in particular the lips can go blue the fingers can sort of go a bluey colour, uh, and this is going to progress over time. And the reason that that is happening is because cyanosis can occur for two reasons, either because the respiratory system is failing or because the heart is failing. When the respiratory system fails, it's much easier to understand why you go blue, because the oxygen level in your arterial blood is going to go down if the respiratory system is failing, and therefore it's very easy to understand why someone goes cyanotic with respiratory failure. With heart failure, it's more difficult to understand. What you have to remember is that in order for the blood to stay red, you need to have flow. Let's imagine just drawing this man's hand. So let's say this is his hand. All that, oh, that's a really bad picture of a hand, but there we go, there's his hand. This hand has blood flowing through it, so let's say here is a blood vessel. If the flow through the circulatory system has come down, then the flow through this blood vessel here is going to be lowered. So imagine all the blood moving sluggishly now. And that means that the tissue is going to be trying to take more oxygen from this blood. Previously, when it was moving through very quickly, but, you know, only a certain amount of oxygen was taken from a certain bit of blood, and then the next bit of blood arrived. When it's going slower, the tissue's going to be demanding more and more oxygen of that same blood that's still flowing through it, which should have gone by now and gone back up the venous system. And that's why that you can end up with this cyanosis, because all the blood's having too much oxygen removed from it at the tissues because of how slow it's moving. So this sort of congestion that results from heart failure, that's what is going to produce this cyanotic colour because you're removing, you've got more time to remove oxygen from that blood because it's moving quick, uh, moving slower rather, um, and therefore it's going to have more oxygen removed from it, making it turn more and more blue. So tissues become progressively bluer uh, as the heart failure progresses, and that's called cyanosis. As things get worse and worse and worse, the blood flow to the brain is going to get worse and worse and worse um, because the flow through the circulatory system is getting worse. That again can then gradually produce this cachexic state. So people can become drowsier and drowsier, stop eating and drinking. And of course, when that happens, they're going to waste away from poor oral intake. Um, and that will worsen the heart failure as well because obviously it's going to then cause atrophy of the cardiac muscle. So that overall is the way then that heart failure can end. It can end with a cachexic state and gradually as the heart muscle atrophies away in cachexia, eventually it will uh, stop uh, beating uh, a cardiac arrest and that's the moment of death. And there's loads of different things that could uh, you know, contribute to that eventual cardiac arrest. If you're not eating and drinking, you're going to become dehydrated, you're going to become uremic, uh, from that so the waste products are all going to build up in the blood if they get high enough they're going to be pushing the heart to a cardiac arrest as well so all sorts of homeostatic mechanisms are going to break at the end of cachexia to eventually lead to a cardiac arrest so um, we will have a break there and in the next video we will discuss how heart failure can impact the kidneys how heart failure can impact the 
lungs and how heart failure can impact the liver.